Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to practice solving equations when we have a variable on the left side of the equation and on the right side. So let's get started. So what we have here is 2 multiplied by the quantity 4x minus 3 minus 8 is equal to 4 plus 2x. So what we have right here is a situation where we can apply the distributive property to simplify a bit. So basically, we are taking everything inside the parentheses here and doubling each one of those terms or multiplying them by 2. So two sets of 4x would be 8x. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. And then we just write the rest of our equation. Minus 8 equals 4 plus 2x. All right, now that we have simplified our equation a bit, what I want to do is I want to take every term with an x in it and I want to move it to the left and I want to take every term without an x or a constant and move it over on the right. Now here's one way of doing this. Now a lot of times teachers like to say well you want to do the opposite and do the same thing on the other side which is true but I'm going to approach this slightly different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every x term that is already on the left and I am just going to drop it down. So I'm going to take this 8x and just drop it down. And then I'm going to go to the other side of my equation and take any x term that's over there and move it over on the left by simply just crossing it off and writing it on the other side as its opposite. So instead of plus 2x, I'm going to write minus 2x. And then what I'm going to do is take all of my constants and write them over on the right hand side of the equal sign. Now we already have one constant on the right side which is 4 so I'm just going to drop that down. So if you're not moving a number or a term on the opposite side then you do not make it opposite of what it is. You just keep it as it is. Now I have two constants on the other side minus 6 and minus 8 and I am going to cross both of those out and write them as plus 6 and plus 8. All right, now we have our x terms on the left side and we have all of our constants on the right side. So now we can combine our x terms because they're like terms and we can combine all of our constants because constants are considered like terms. So 8x minus 2x is 6x. And 4, 6, and 8 is 18. So now we have the equation 6 times x is equal to 18. So x must be 3 because that is the only thing you can multiply by 6 to make 18. So let's just say that x is equal to 3. Now if you wanted to show your work to completion, when you have only a coefficient remaining, you just divide both sides by that coefficient. So that would leave us with x equals 18 divided by 6, which is 3. All right, let's go ahead and do a second example. Okay, now with this equation, notice that we have a lot of negatives involved. And the most common mistake I see with students is they fail to apply the integer rules correctly. So if we take a look at this negative right here that's on the outside of this set of parentheses here, the rule is, is if you have just one negative on the outside, you got to consider that negative 1. So it's like you're taking negative 1 and you're multiplying it by each term on the inside of parentheses. Or the shortcut is, is you just take everything inside the parentheses and you write it exactly opposite of what it is. So instead of positive 1, you can write negative 1. And instead of positive 7x, you write negative 7x. Now this is because if you take a negative times a positive, that's always a negative. And here we have a negative times a positive, which is also a negative. Or we can consider this negative as the word opposite. The opposite of positive 1 is negative 1. The opposite of positive 7 is negative 7x. All right, so we kind of had the same thing here with this part of our equation. We have a negative 6. So what we're going to do is distribute this negative 6 to negative 7 and to negative x. And remember, if there is no coefficient in front of a variable, there actually is. And that coefficient is a 1. So we have negative 6 times negative 7, which is positive 4x. 
42. And then we have negative 6 times negative 1x, which is positive 6x. And that is equal to 36. All right, let's take all of our x terms and get them over on the left and all of the constants over on the right. So the first term that we have with an x is negative 7x. So what I'm going to do is just drop that down, negative 7x. We're not going to move it on the other side of the equal sign because we want to keep our x terms on the left. And this positive 6x is also on the left. So we can just keep it as it is. We do not write it opposite. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this constant here, negative 1, and this constant here, positive 42, and move both of those terms on the other side of our equal sign and combine them with this positive 36. So we're going to take this negative 1 and write positive 1. And we're going to take this positive 42 and write minus 42. All right, what we're going to do now is combine our x terms on the left and our constants on the right. Negative 7x and positive 6x is negative 1x, or just negative x. Now over here, we have 36 plus 1, which is 37, and that's positive. And we got to combine that with negative 42, which is a total of negative 5. Now we're not quite done yet. Our goal is to get x by itself, but not only do we have to get x by itself, it has to be positive x. So what you do when you have just a negative x left is understand that our coefficient is actually negative 1. And we have to divide both sides by that coefficient of negative 1. So that leaves us with x is equal to positive 5 because negative 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 5. All right, let's go ahead and do a third example. Okay, so to begin with, there's nothing we can simplify on the left-hand side. So I'm just going to bring down everything on the left. 24a minus 22 equals. Now on the right-hand side, we have to distribute this negative 4 to each term inside these parentheses. So negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 times negative 6a is positive 20. Or a. All right. Now what we have to do is this. Now I can see at this point that this equation is going to have no solution. And here's why. Whenever you get an a term that is exactly the same on both sides of your equal sign, like we have 24a here and 24a here, and when they're both positive or both negative, so they have to be identical in every way, we should recognize that that is going to result in a problem that has no solution. Now, let's talk about why that is. It is because, let's say, for example, I took this positive 24a and I moved it to the other side. So I'm going to bring down this 24a here. And we move this positive 24a to the other side by writing minus 24a. And then let's say I took this negative 22 and moved it to the other side and wrote positive 22 and then combined it with this minus 4. Now, at this point, we have something minus itself, which results in 0. And on the other side, we have 18. Now, we know that 0 is not equal to 18. So when you come up with something that is not equal, then you know that there is no solution to that equation. All right, let's go ahead and do a fourth and last example. All right, let's go ahead and simplify everything here on the left-hand side to begin with. So we have negative 5 times positive 1, which is negative 5. And negative 5 times negative 5x is positive 25x. And now we have to distribute this positive 5. So positive 5 and negative 8x is negative 40x. And positive 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And on this side, we can go ahead and just combine these two terms since they are like terms. Negative 4x and negative 8x is negative 12x. 
All right, now let's go ahead and get all of our x terms on the left and all of our constants on the right. So the x terms that are already on the left are positive 25x minus 40x. And then we're going to take this minus 12x and move it on the other side of our equal sign and write it as plus 12x is equal to. Now, let's take all of our constants that were on the left and move them to the right. And notice there were no constants on the right to begin with. So we just got to take the ones on the left and move them on the right. And we have two of them. We have negative 5 and negative 10. Now, we know that when we move it on the other side of our equation, they're going to turn positive. So we're going to have a positive 5 and a positive 10. And altogether, I know that's going to be positive 15. So I'm just going to go ahead and write a 15 right here. All right, let's go ahead and combine these x terms over here on the left. So if I were to combine just the positive ones first, 25x and 12x, that would give me 37x. But we still would have more negatives than positives. We would have positive 37 and negative 40. So I could just go ahead and write negative 3x right here. But if you can't do that mentally, then it might still be a good idea to go ahead and just write 37x minus 40x so you can visualize it. So I would say it's okay to skip steps if you can do little pieces in your head. I normally do that, but it just kind of depends what you are comfortable with. So now we have 37x minus 40x, which is negative 3x, is equal to positive 15. And now we divide both sides of our equation by the coefficient of negative 3. And that leaves us with x is equal to negative 5. So that completes our last example for this tutorial. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.